And welcome to a new episode of The Simpsons Did It. I'm your host, Steven Skolansky. And I'm your co-host, Robert Skolansky. And this week, we're going to uh, go to the sperm bank? Maybe. Mm, aren't we going to Duff Gardens? Ooh, ooh, that's better. Let's go to Duff Gardens instead. I, I think we've both been to Duff Gardens, actually. Have we? Well, if we've been to Universal, we have. Oh, I didn't know they had a Duff Gardens. Maybe that wasn't you. Maybe it wasn't built when I went. Yeah, they have a uh, Duff Gardens brewery. Oh my god. Is it just yep. as big as uh just as big as the one in the show? Or is it like a uh, mini one? It's a mini one. It's more like a it's more like a, a beer garden than anything. But they okay. call it Duff Duff Gardens brewery. Yeah. Ooh, did they have Duff Light? Duff Dry? And uh, what was the third one? Can't remember. Uh, I I don't know, but I did get to see the uh, I don't I don't know what they're called the the Duff characters. Yeah, the seven little Duffs. Yeah, the seven little Duffs. I got to see the seven little Duffs. All I mean, seven of them. All seven of them, but they weren't real people. They were just more like statues. Oh well, that's stupid. I was going to ask if Surly <laughs> pissed you off. <laughs> Surly looks only out for one guy. Surly. Surly. But we'll get to that. Yeah, well, that's fun. I like going to amusement parks. Amusement parks are always fun. Yes, yes, they are. Yep. So uh, this week, uh, we're talking about season four, episode 13, Selma's Choice, which is a reference to the novel Sophie's Choice. I've I've never read Sophie's Choice. Never read Sophie's Choice. but But I hear that her choice was hard. I don't know. Yeah, it's tough making choices. <laughs> I think I think if I remember correctly, Sophie cho- Sophie's choice is about her choosing between like a dude and something else. I don't know. Again, I've never read the book. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> um, I'm, just, so, I'm just estimating here. <laughs> yeah. So we got the first. Oh no, no, no! Sorry, I thought this no. was the first episode of uh, January, but it's not. Uh, it's not. But we got an air date of January 21st, 1993. Yeah, and, and we're about halfway through uh, season four. We are just over, just over halfway through season four. And it's just getting better and better. Yeah. Uh, so recap, a death sends the Simpsons to a funeral and makes Selma wonder if she should have a child. I mean, uh, you, know, you know, funerals will do that to, to younger people uh, if... Their their relative who passed away was was childless and told you maybe you should have a family. Uh, we'll get to that though. But I mean, I don't think in our lifetime I haven't been to too many funerals in my lifetime. No, and the ones that I have, I've been way too young to be like, oh yeah, I need to have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> You're at grandma's funeral. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should grow up and have a kid. I don't know. I mean. I mean, the last funeral I went to, I believe, was our grandmother's in, in 2012, and I would have been 25. So, I mean, it would have been right around that time if I wanted to start thinking about having family, but uh, no no dice. No yes. Yeah. So, the chalkboard gag this week. <laughs> I will not yell she's dead during roll call. Well, I think we clearly know why Bart got in trouble for this one. <laughs> who do you think? Uh, who do you think uh, he was saying was dead? Uh, Sher- Sherry or Terry? <laughs> Sherry or Terry? Is the, the two that come to mind? Well, yep. Lisa's Lisa's you know two grades below him, so it would be Lisa. Do we know any other girls in Bart's class besides maybe Samantha Stanky, who's not? I don't know. I've never haven't seen her recently. Um, no, so I'm going to What about Jane? No, Janie's in Lisa's class. Janie's in Lisa's class. So it would be Sherry or Terry at this point. Okay, I, we're going to look, okay, so next time we get a shot of Bart's classroom, let's see how many females are actually in Bart's class. Because that'd be actually kind of interesting, because, yeah. I mean, I, I would say when we were going to school, I'd say it was about 50-50, right? Yeah, it was about 50-50. Now, when I went to college... That was uh, more exciting for me, even though I didn't do anything with it. But it was uh, three women to one guys when I was at college. See, okay, so we got to we're gonna look at this, folks. When we uh, 
Because I I like the I like the chalkboard gag. Chalkboard gag's great, yeah. but I can only two only two girls come to mind in Bart's class. I mean, I feel like in later seasons they introduce a few more female classmates of Bart's, but I could be wrong. Yeah, really weird. All right. Yeah. So the couch gag this week. Simpsons go <laughs> to sit on the couch and are trapped by a net. Once again, I, mean, I think it's these burglars, man. They're just busting in, stealing their stuff. This time they're like, let's just set a trap for them because it'll be funny. <laughs> or maybe it was all a mirage and they were in the jungle. Oh, right. And because the, the, the net was on the ground, they stepped on it and they went whoop upwards. Yeah. So <laughs> so maybe 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 the maybe the the it was all a mirage and they're really in the jungle. There's no couch, man. There's no couch. It's <laughs> all an illusion. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we start out this episode by watching the one, the only Lance Murdoch jumping over 16 blazing buses. And then he crashes into a wall and the announcer asks, well, what are you going to do now? And he tells the announcer he's going to go to Duff Gardens. And I, I feel like that's probably a reference to, you know, when the Super Bowl. At, the Super Bowl or World Series or NBA Championship or I, you just I won the they, you just won the Super Bowl. What are you gonna do now? I'm going go to, to Disneyland. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is I know they make sure they go to like an athlete who has kids and who played well <laughs> enough. Well, because you you don't want to go to like the drunk superstar and be like, hey, well, what are you gonna do next? I'm gonna go to Disneyland. I'm going to go to a pornography store. <laughs> I'm going to buy pornography. <laughs> Thanks, Homer. <laughs> you know, you know, okay. I swear if, okay. So obviously this has been a trope for, you know, a really long time for sports players to do this. Yeah. You know, just to be that guy, yeah. the next person <laughs> to win a Super Bowl really should say, I'm going to Universal Studios. Well, I well, you know, I don't know if I'd prefer Universal over Disneyland. I, I, I mean, by the time this comes out, I it'll been a few months since my trip. Um, but I mean, honestly, I could just spend all day in Springfield at Universal. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I great. Fe- <laughs> I feel now, like unless someone's is, being paid to say Disneyland, yeah. if you say Disneyland, we'll give you a million dollars. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only my only issue with Universal is the rides are very short at Universal. Yeah, but so I, that's think why I think I think I prefer Disney. Well, I think it's more of an experience you're getting at Universal. Yeah, than no, you I are agree than that. you are at Disney. Disney, I, I agree. Well, Disneyland in itself is an experience, and I will say Star Wars Land was pretty freaking awesome. Um, anyways, so now we get the commercial Duff Gardens, home of the Whiplash, to complete <laughs> to be completed in 1994. So. The following year, and I I love how they show like the roller coaster and Lance Murdoch is on it and he falls <laughs> off, and like he's in like he's in like a, a cast from like his crash, and then uh. the washing machine, which is like I've never been in one of these rides. I don't know if they still exist out there, but like you're in a spinny thing and it kind of just goes back and forth, like you know a washing machine. Yeah, but I've was, seen these. What was I've it called? These... It wasn't the Tilt a Whirl. No, I've seen them. It basically it spins you around really, really fast. The floor drops out, and, and like the force yeah. keeps your back on the on the wall. I I would puke doing that ride. Yeah, I, I don't can't know. do. I, I don't know. I can't do ever spinny do rides anymore. Yeah, I just can't. And apparently, I can't do up and down rides either because we did the Guardians of the Galaxy ride at California Disney Adventure, and it was an awesome ride, but. It, it, Apparently, the up and down motion kills my equal, <laughs> equilibrium. I don't know. It was weird. It was the weirdest thing. It was a great ride, but uh, I could only do it once. We were going to do it again, but I'm like, nope, I'm only doing it once. Um, at Duff Gardens, I didn't see this at the Springfield uh, thing in Universal, but apparently the happiest fish in the world live in the beer aquarium at Duff Gardens. I don't think you could they're really drunk. put fish in, a, in beer. <laughs> they would die. They would die. Oh, yeah. After they got really drunk. Yes. I mean, that would be a great way to go, I guess. I don't know. Swimming in you... beer. I don't know. If you, if it's a good beer. If it was like a bad beer, I'd be disappointed in that death. But, you know. So we get the kids running in um, after the commercial. Or no, I think they were all watching it. And Homer's like, okay, kids, what do we say? Um, and the kids are like, we're under, we're under six years old. And that Homer is a college student. Now... 
the kids could pro so apparently obviously there's either a um cheaper option if they're under six or they're free under six and I, and a cheaper option if you were a college student as a uh you know as if you're an adult yeah like i guess so like obviously i'm assuming like if you're over like 25 it's more expensive and well i'm sure there's a student discount that's what homer's oh, probably trying yeah, to, yeah. to say like, like uh where was it like at uh most baseball games like i know when we went to the twins game up here they have college yeah. night for you know get five dollar oh, tickets yeah. i mean i'm sure at a lot of places have it but most amusement parks have a under a certain age gets in free i'm trying to remember universal because we were sitting at the gate waiting to get in and i saw the ticket prices and i think there was a thing for kids they were cheaper but I don't remember how much cheaper. See, see, they can't they can't pull that at Disney because kids under six will enjoy it probably very much. Yeah. Like, nope, we're gonna try. Actually, here's what we're gonna do: kids under a certain age have to pay twice as much as the grown up going because <laughs> they're know, the man. ones that really want to go. I mean, as a grown up, I really enjoy Disneyland. I enjoyed honestly; it was a very enjoyable experience, and I'd like to go back again. Yeah, because um, we 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 hit most of the rides, but uh, not all of them. Um, so Marge comes in and she says to everybody that great aunt, great aunt Gladys is now passed away and Bart's like, Oh, did she look like this? But he was wrong because she apparently looks more like Patty and Bart does that little <laughs> thing. Yeah. And then Homer's like, but I want to go to Duff Gardens right now. Homer <laughs> quit pouting. I'm not pouting. I'm mourning. God, I want to use that line so badly. <laughs> Stupid dead woman. <laughs> I want to use that line. I don't yeah. know how. I don't know when, but I want to use that line. Oh, here, here. When the when the uh, when when the Mariners don't make it to the playoffs, and you're <laughs> Who like am I blaming nobody's dead. The team's not like... dead. They're not going to the playoffs. For all intents and purposes. dude. What do you? Okay, what do you think they have like during the hockey season when the team gets uh? Bump from the playoffs, they always have the uh, the eulogies. Yeah, but I can't blame like an actual living person who dead for not going. No, like, you can, but you can blame the Yankees. Stupid Yankees. Yankees. Yeah, but they're not dead. He says, <laughs> "Stupid dead woman." They're not. They're neither women or dead. <laughs> Don't discuss. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, if I can't for some reason go to the like, God, I keep saying like, um. You know, I got to go to the Brewer playoff games. Now, if somebody were to pass away to stop me from going to those games, then I could use the line. However, nobody passed away, so I don't get to use the line. Um, so, you know, they drive to the funeral, and on the way, they sing on top of Old Smokey. And <laughs> Marge is like, really? You guys are going to sing that song? And then they start singing Ding Dong, The Witch is Dead. <laughs> I think Old Smokey was probably a better chosen song yeah. for this situation, but... Because I feel like, and I feel like Aunt Gladys wasn't a witch. I mean, there's never really, it doesn't seem like, as we go into the episode, it doesn't seem like she was a bad person. I mean, I get they're angry at her for dying and they can't go to Duff Gardens right away. Also, Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead. If, for any uncultured people out there, that is from The Wizard of Oz. Um. Yep. So, but I, I don't feel like she was a bad person that they would be singing that. Yeah, I wish I knew where these guys were driving off to. Yeah, like, we don't know where the funeral is either. I mean, it but seems... we do. We do. We know the building it's in, but we don't know if it's in Springfield. Well, it's or... not. Why would they be going on a long road trip to Springfield? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> they had to pick up Patty and Selma to go to this That's true. funeral. Yeah. No. Yep. Okay. Yes. For someone that works at the DMV, do they not have their own vehicles? <laughs> maybe it was maybe it was easier for them to maybe they can't get their own driver's license. Maybe right. they take the bus to work. <laughs> or they walk to work because Springfield really isn't that big. Oh, that'd be funny. Where do you work? DMV. Well, how do you get there? Bus. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe they legally can't get a driver's license because of their eyesight or a, a broken foot. I don't know. Um, or maybe they just decided to all go together. I don't know. It's it's just yeah. kind of funny. 
So, and I do love, so they stop, they console, uh, Homer consoles Patty and Selma. They're like, what did we do? Because, <laughs> like, Homer's actually being nice to them for once because, you know, their aunt passed away. And I do love the fact, so I don't know why they did this. I know they took the station wagon. I feel like there'd be enough room for four, for two kids and two adults in the back if Maggie is sitting up front with Homer and Marge. I don't know what kind of station wagon this is. Obviously, there's probably a center console thing. Well, I was wondering um, if it was one of those reversible station wagons. Remember, like, the one, one yep, that Ben I'm had? Yeah, I'm driven in those. Yeah, where the seat in the back. Maybe, maybe it's one of those that we just don't know it's about. It's not, it. though. Well, it's maybe not, Maybe it's we don't know. We, but Lisa, no, we, Lisa and Bart are sitting in the, the hatchback area. That's the only but reason when Homer be... put, no, 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 no. But when Homer puts the luggage in, he crushes Lisa against the glass. The back glass. Yeah, she's which means they're There's sitting. Nowhere... Yes, which means they're sitting in the hatched area. They're sitting in the hatched area, but we, there's no seats back there. Well, you don't know that. They haven't shown a shot of it. It could be there's one of those no... reversible seat thingies back there. It's it's not. What are you talking uh, about? Go... Most of the station wagons in the '90s actually had that, like the the outback. Yeah, but then. But then why would Lisa be crushed up against the glass and ho- and Bart would be buried underneath the luggage? Because there's, there's not no enough... seats there. Well, no, because there's just because Homer's like, you can still throw things in the back of a hatch if there's seats there. You just throw them on top of the kids. Yeah, I don't but see Lisa... I don't see why that's not an option. Even okay. Because... So you're sitting back there, they can throw the luggage back there on top of the kids. But then why would Lisa be Pressed up against the glass like that. That means the hatch is full. Exactly. That's the joke. That's the thing. Homer shoved all that stuff back there, and now the hatch is full, and the kids are crushed. Yeah, I get the joke, but there's no seats back there. We've you don't know that. No, you haven't. We have not yeah, seen have. the hatch completely opened. And, well, there's there, you just can't put kids in the back of the hatch just to say, here, enjoy the ride. There has to be um, physical seats back um, there. You can. You shouldn't, but you can. Well, let's just say they're doing the real responsible thing and there's actual seats in the hatch. Fine. Okay. So they pick them up and Homer, you know, uh, they're driving and they're, I, I think they're all talking about like Aunt Gladys and Homer's like, don't call her a dog faced woman. Don't call her a dog faced woman. And he's like, ah, Yeah, in the in dog the, face woman. Basically in the car, Patty mentions that uh, Aunt Gladys's legend will live on live forever. And Homer thinks to himself, Yeah, the legend of the dog faced woman. <laughs> yeah. And he thinks it's so funny, says out loud, adding legend of the dog faced woman. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> and then Marge yells at him. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So uh, they decide. So I again, I'd like to know where they're driving because now they stop to get some lunch at the buzzing sign diner, and the, the diner sign you know buzzes because that's the joke. Um, With the neon neon light, neon lights usually yeah, buzz like that. Buzz, yeah. And so they're sitting in. I love how they're sitting in the diner eating, and Homer's got <laughs> one of those kids placemats where you know there's a maze, and I I remember doing those as a kid. And he can't get out of the maze. And it's a, you know, it's designed for children. It's not really that hard. Yeah. And then the waitress comes back. He's like, oh, can I get you guys anything else? And a new kids menu for you? (laughs) No. Yes. And I love how he like crumples the the placemat and throws it on the ground. And there's like a bunch of crumpled up (laughs) balls of paper on the ground. Hey, mazes can be hard. It's for a kid, and Homer is an adult. Yeah, but he has a crane up his nose. We don't know that. <laughs> yes, we do. It's we not. Know. It's twenty twenty one. We know. Yeah, but it's not canon at this point yet. No. So, um, uh, Marge wants to remember Aunt Gladys, but remembers something that wasn't correct. She remembers like a movie. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they're like they're like she daydreams and they're they're at a lake and she's like, Oh, that was that was not that. That never happened. <laughs> How can you have a memory of, of something that's from a movie with yourself inserted in it? I mean, don't you remember that time that guy killed our dog and then I went on a killing rampage? Oh wait, that was John Wick. Yeah, I don't think that was you. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so now we get, now we finally get to the funeral home. <laughs> no, no, no. The kids, it. no, no, no. Not yet. The kids, they're, they're driving away from the, the diner. Oh, and, yeah. And, uh, partly certain the backyards like playing the county game. They're like 10, 11, 12. And they're just oh. like, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're just doing the county game. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> not realizing that the luggage is falling off. <laughs> Every piece of luggage. How do you not? How do you not realize? Room. How do you not realize that the luggage is falling off? There's four people in that car. Uh, There's four adults in that car. How do you not hear? You know the luggage falling off the the car. Oh, that's so awesome. That was great. And then when they get to where they're going, there's literally no luggage anymore yes. on the roof of the car. How do you not? How do you not know? Like, there's a rear view mirror. I feel like, I get Homer is the dumbest person alive, but I feel like Marge would notice that. Yeah, especially if she's looking back at the kids counting, she'd start seeing yeah. things. Now, I, now this, it's still kind and of... And why, but- why wouldn't Patty or Selma say anything? Because I'm assuming their luggage is on top, too. And going back to that joke with them getting crushed, why did they just put all the luggage on top in the first place? Well, I think they did because now you look at the Bart and Lisa in the back and they're, they're, you know, there's no luggage back there anymore. Or maybe but a why few would... pieces of luggage. Yeah. Maybe Bart and Lisa are like, hey, put this on the roof. And then Homer couldn't tie yeah. it down. And now it's, you know, no, but see, clearly this, he couldn't tie it down. But see, this leads me to believe is like, A, where the hell are they going and yeah. B, how long are you planning on staying there? Yeah, they had suitcases. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. I, I wish we had some frame of reference to where they were going. Even if you're just saying, oh, yeah, we're going to go, we're going to go, you know, out of town to this funeral. Well, like, like, that like least... give us, well, give us some point of reference. I mean, they, they've gone to Detroit. They've gone to D.C. They've gone to places. So yeah. it's like, so it's like, okay, let's, let's invest another new city into the, the world of Springfield if, or something. Even if you call it like, I don't know, Doink City or something. Tell <laughs> me where they're, <laughs> tell me where they're <laughs> maybe they're okay. going to Ogdenville or North Haverbrook. Or North Haverbrook. <laughs> <laughs> My gum, I put them on the map. Um, so they go to the, they get to the funeral home with no luggage. And the name of the funeral home is the Lucky Stiff Funeral Home. <laughs> and their slogan is, we put the fun in funeral. Oh, that's oh, good. Oh, boy. That's, that's good. good. Oh, that's a good one. All right. So now we get the guy, <laughs> you know, giving the eulogy. And uh, he, he's, uh, you know, basically um, saying everything about, you know, Aunt Gladys. And then yeah. someone comes up on stage and he's like, <laughs> you know, whispers in his ears like, that's a woman? Dear Lord. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess everything I said could be, you know, turned around. Yeah. And then, you know, Patty comes up on stage, you know, busts in and shoves you know, him off stage. Shoves him off stage and says, get out of here. And, you know, yeah. Patty starts giving the eulogy and he's like, well, Gladys, she wasn't a rich, rich, rich woman. And then, like, everyone gets up and leaves. Like, <laughs> Okay, so I, how many of those people were relatives, and how many of those people just kind of knew Aunt Gladys and were like, oh, maybe she left me some money in the will? Also, I feel like those people would know if she was poor or not, or not well, well off, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, you would know that, and, okay, I, I mean, okay, so of the funerals we've ever been to, I mean, yeah. the majority of them, we were in the will, because we were, yeah. you know, grandkids, I mean, yeah. we were the grandkids, Um yeah. But I, I've never gone to, well, I guess, okay, so I guess I've been to one of Shay's relatives' funerals. But and, again, a relative, but, though. Exactly, of, but of Shay. But I was like, I was like, uh, well, I'm not getting any money in this eulogy. This person never even met. Like, I wasn't, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, who's I mean, going I've... to a funeral thinking, I'm in their will? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> unless you're a relative, most, I would say... I, I guess I really can't put a number to it, but a high percentage of wills don't have friends in them. Usually no. it's usually family members. Yeah. I've only been to one funeral, unfortunately of a friend of mine who passed away um, because of a bad accident. And like, obviously I don't know if he had a living will or will in general. Um, obviously in that scenario, if you didn't have a will, everything goes to the next closest living relative. So, I yeah, I wouldn't go to somebody's funeral expecting 
oh, she was rich or he was rich. I'm going to get a bunch of money out of this. Well, yeah, it just seems really weird. Um, But then we see Bart behind the casket (laughs) playing with the dead body and freaking Lisa out. (laughs) Well, he before he was playing with the dead body, like with the arm. Yeah. And then Homer stopped him. Yeah, just lifting it up, dropping it. But hey, Bart's a kid. He likes playing with dead bodies, right? Yeah. He would have probably been one of those guys to go behind the mayor's house to poke the dead body. Probably. Uh, So, you know, Homer, you know, is really hungry and uh, starts, you know, starts to cry. And Marge consoles Homer thinking (laughs) it's about Gladys. (laughs) Why would he cry over Aunt Gladys? I mean, I'm sure he's met her a couple times. Well, not if she lives like way out of town. Maybe their wedding. Well, no, because they had a shotgun wedding. So I guess I don't even know when Homer would have met Aunt I'm Gladys. sure. I'm sure he probably, you know, maybe to bring the kids out, or you know, maybe she was in town visiting um, her sister. So I mean, Mar- Marge and Selma and Patty's mom. Um, yeah. So I'm sure. I'm sure Homer met her a couple times, but I have a feeling not enough to, you know, weep at her funeral. Yeah. Homer's kind of a sociopath, but not really. Yeah. And so Lisa wishes she had gotten to know her aunt better. Um, <laughs> and then the voice says, don't worry about it. <laughs> and Lisa runs off screaming. <laughs> That's good. I love, I love when kids do crazy things like that. And, and obviously we learned it was Bart, you know, yeah. saying that to Lisa because Bart's a jerk. Yep. And so Aunt Gladys, you know, uh, so, um, was uh, will Lionel? Read. Yeah, that the will weird Lionel Hutz comes in. He's like, <laughs> I make my fees off of just pressing a button. <laughs> hey, I do too. Oh but yeah, I many buttons. <laughs> you hit many buttons. Lionel Hutz I only did. hits play. Uh, yeah. And so Aunt Gladys starts her uh, will by reading uh, Robert Frost's uh, "Road Not Taken." Never read it. No, nope. but I also <laughs> like to point out that if they're not in Springfield, how is Lionel Hutz her estate lawyer? Maybe like, they just maybe maybe the family just hired him as like a family attorney, and so Lionel Hutz drove all the way out to wherever the hell they went. Yep. Jeez, this is so weird. Okay. I anyway, know. so Homer uh, fast. <laughs> apparently, he has the remote. It starts yeah. fast forwarding through the poem. Is like Mar- uh, Marge's like, "Hey, Homer." It's like, "Who who wants to get past the poem?" Everyone raises their hand <laughs> <laughs> and agrees to skip this, over. I will say this is one of the few episodes where we see Patty and Selma not give crap to Homer. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, they're they're mourning. <laughs> They're morning. Yep. And so Lionel Hutz dubbed over the video, leaving himself <laughs> $50,000. Now that's a, I mean, a fairly good chunk of money. Yeah. That's a and, good deal. and I love how, I love how everyone started leaving because they didn't think she was rich. No, by all means, 50,000 in your bank account when you die might not. Die. I mean, that's a good time for me. Shit. If I died yeah. with 50,000 in my bank account, I think I'd be pretty happy. Yeah. But I do think it's kind of funny that everyone left the funeral thinking, oh, she would dance. She had no money. But, like, the other problem, too, is all those people at the funeral, they had to know whether or not she had a will. Well, that, too. I'm sure she did. If Lionel Hutz was her estate lawyer, yeah. albeit not the best one, but... No. Uh, but, yeah, so <laughs> Marge yells at Lionel Hutz, and he's like, yeah, it works a lot more than it should. Like, wow, you yeah, guys that's, really... Yeah, how do you not... Really dumb, dumb clients. And Clearly, what what is he? Freaking the attorney for Cletus the Slackjaw Yokel? Yeah, yeah. And so now she's you know saying what what everyone gets, and apparently they just kind of brush off the fifty thousand. Apparently, no one gets that. Uh, but uh, Marge maybe gets... she didn't have fifty thousand dollars, and Lionel Hutz was just trying to give himself a payday. Maybe. And so Marge uh, gets uh, potato chips that re- resemble celebrities. I like how one of them uh, was a Jay Leno chip, and you see yeah. it's Homer sitting there eating it, and then he's like... Well, he was eating a bunch of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, but he the, the Leno one is the one that he kind of was like, oh, and then ate, ate Jay Leno, and like, just kept on eating them. No, I feel like he did the the that gas because of the fact that Gladys left the chips to Marge, and it was just like... Well, yeah, and then, eh. you know, that, yeah, and then he decides to eat Jay Leno. Yeah. Well, it, no, but I'm saying it wasn't Jay Leno's chip. It was no, I, w- that- I know that. That's what I was saying. He yeah. he paused at Jay Leno's chip. I'm just saying that's the chip yeah. that they paused on. Oh, yeah. When yeah, he yeah. did the gasp. 
and then he yeah. ate it. Yeah. Um, and so her sister, Marge's mother, left uh, Jub Jub to uh, Patty. Or yep. no, first appearance at Jub Jub. No, he left. No, it Selma. Selma. Yep. Selma, because it's Selma's choice. Yep. And yeah. so. Oh, Jub Jub. Oh, Jub Jub. And that's the first appearance at Jub Jub. Yep. You know, I was almost wondering because I remember the Troy McLure episode that had Jub Jub in it, and I was yep. like. Where did Jub Jub come from? And now we know. Yep. Apparently Gladys owned a uh, iguana. Yep. Weird pet for an old lady to own, I guess, but sure. Yeah, they're probably easy enough to take care of. Yeah. And so I like how Patty and Selma get a grandfather clock. I mean, you could probably sell that for a nice chunk of change if it's a good grandfather clock. Yeah, I kind of want to, next time we see Patty and Selma's uh, apartment, I'd like to see if that grandfather clock is in is in there. Yeah. Or not. Um, and so now we see the Simpsons driving back with only the grandfather clock and no luggage. Well, yeah, because all their luggage fell off as they were driving and they never stopped to pick it back up again. Maybe that's why they had to leave right away after the will reading because they're like, shit, we don't have any clothes. We better go home. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I guess we can't stay here anymore. Yeah. Um, and now uh, Selma tells Patty that she wants to have a baby. In the car, she's like, oh, I kind of been thinking about my life and, yeah. you know, I, I, I want to have a baby. And Maggie tries to get out of the car. Like, apparently Maggie thought that uh, Selma was going to try and kidnap her. I guess. I thought Maggie was smarter than that. Yeah. Well, she is she's a Simpsons a woman. So. Yep. so now we get to, because uh, now we get a commercial break and then we come back and, uh, Selma has gone to the low expectations dating service. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, when you're that desperate, I guess. Um, so uh, it's a video dating service. And I love how when Pat uh, Selma does the, uh, the video dating thing, uh, she eats her cigarette and then pulls it out of her mouth and ties it in a knot. Like, I know there's a thing where, uh, you know, if a woman it, can tie like a, it's a, a cherry, a cherry, it's a cherry stem, stem yeah. and a knot in her mouth, she's supposed to be a really good kisser. Um, yeah, I don't know if that would really be a turn on to watch a woman put a cigarette in her mouth and uh, tie it in a knot because uh, A, smoking is disgusting and B, that is also well, disgusting. Hey, what's pretty impressive, she did it while it was lit. So come on, you have to give her a little bit for doing a lit cigarette like that. I, I will give her a pop. I ain't going to freaking date her. Kind of like Willie. Willie doesn't want to date her. He looked at the video and was like. I know, exactly. Ah, back to the lock you with you, Nessie. <laughs> <laughs> Willie does not approve. Willie does not approve. No, Neither he does do not. So then uh, Selma decides to go to Princess Opal, Potions, Hexes, and Fax Machine. Um, and it's right next to, right next door to Lionel Hutz's. I can't believe it's a law firm, which is weird because I feel like we've we've talked about uh, businesses that are on either side of Lionel. Hutz's well, they business. probably keep going out of business because they're <laughs> bad businesses. Bad businesses, or malls malls don't do very well with businesses sometimes. So yes, they they tend to tend to go out, and so I, I love it. Princess Holmes like one drop of this love potion. And you'll have a man to you desire. And then she tastes, you know, Princess Opal Thanks. takes a drop of the potion. And Selma's like, really? What are the magical ingredients? Mostly corn syrup. A little rubbing alcohol. You'll be lucky if it doesn't make your hair fall out, actually. <laughs> and then she looks at the bottle and it's labeled true serum. <laughs> uh, uh, sodium pent pentothal is usually what they kind of use. for, And, like, there's really no such thing as a true serum this is kind of more to get you to relax and maybe open up. Yeah. So then uh, Selma goes grocery shopping and I love how she hits on the bag boy at work. And he's like, it's a gun store policy to date customers because it's the, the squeaky teenager. And I love how his cashier buddy was like, no, it's not. Yes, it is. And he's like, he's <laughs> trying to hook up the bag boy with Selma. <laughs> that's so awesome uh, obviously he's, the, he's doing that as a joke which is really funny yes. uh, so now we go back to the uh, DMV and Selma avoids Hans Mole Man's driver's license because he can't read the letters <laughs> on the eye chart <laughs> again how many times is this that uh, 
that uh, he's been to the DMV. This is his second or third visit to the DMV. I believe it's only his second. Okay. Because I was looking at it and when she, I paused it, then he stamps the driver's license. It actually says Hans Moleman this time and not Ralph. What was it? Ralph. uh, God, why can't I remember? Remember the the last name? I don't know. Anyways. Either way. But it's so weird that uh, there was a fake, I don't know if it was a fake name, because everyone always posts, oh, Hans Moleman's real name is this. And this time it actually says Hans Moleman on the yeah. driver's license. And his yeah. address is 920 Oak Grove, Springfield, USA, okay. 90701. Okay. So it's a real address in Springfield, Missouri. Is it a house? Yes. Okay. So it's, so it's a real address, but the yeah. zip code is from Southern California. That's because Springfield doesn't exist. <laughs> well, it does, but it doesn't. Yes, but I think it's funny that they pulled a. I I don't know if this was just a writer writing this address, or yeah. if an animator just Googled Springfield and tried to find a random address to put on this driver's license. I don't know. But it is kind of funny that that they pulled a real street address from a Springfield and then mm-hmm. used the zip code of a of a California zip code. <laughs> well, uh, that's because they don't want Springfield to be in Missouri. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Oh, uh, you, you've never watched Doom Patrol, have you? No. No. It's like, uh, uh, God, what's his name? It's like a a, a street. Danny. Danny the street. And basically, Danny the Street can show up wherever Danny the Street is needed. Oh. It's pretty cool. If you haven't watched it, watch Doom Patrol. It's really funny. Okay. Uh, uh, Hans Moleman's height is 4'4", and he weighs 140 pounds. I feel like that's very overweight for... for uh, oh, yeah. I feel like that's for overweight for person. his height. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He, he would be considered a tiny person. Yeah. He is tiny, though. He is. He's a small guy, but it's Hans Moleman. Yep. So anyways, so uh, Selma, you know, decides, screw it, ask Hans out, they go on a date, <laughs> and she's like, she's sitting there, and she's like, oh, uh, I'm going to imagine having kids with him, and then realizes what the kids are going to be like. Now, granted, I'm pretty sure Hans Moleman probably can't have kids at this point. He no. seems like he's in his 70s. Probably not, but I like how... Uh... I like how he's reading the menu. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> just saying ra- banana or some random words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and the waiter comes up, sir, you're looking at the wine list. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and Selma's disgusted by the uh, the children she sees in her, her dream, and she ends the date. Yep. Oh, no, oh, no, like, no, no, no. So she takes it back to the home, car, yeah. And then, and then she, want, uh, she daydreams about it at, um, when, like, Hans goes in for a kiss and then she's disgusted and kicks Hans out of her car. Yep. Um, and it and wasn't he like, this isn't even where I live. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just drops him off at a random location. Hans Mole, man, he can get where he needs to go. It's okay. Yeah. He got, he got this. So now we get our second Duff Gardens commercial where we see, uh, Jimbo, Kearney and Dolph are being arrested for trying to steal bumper cars. Yep. Cause apparently that's a thing. Even though I don't think bumper cars work when they're off the track. Uh, no, they're they're powered by the magnets and electricity running through the ceiling of the, the bumper ride. car. Yeah. Um. So then we also see Duff Gardens has a the contusion ride, which <laughs> is people strung up like the Newton's cradle. Oh, uh, that would hurt. And Lance Murdoch is in the middle of it. Yeah, <laughs> Lance Murdoch must that must be like one of his sponsors, and he has to do like every yeah. every commercial that they that they do. And so, uh, so as they're watching Patty and Selma come in, and Selma's talking about you know wanting to have a, a she can't have a child because she can't find a man, and Lisa suggests artificial insemination. Yeah, she's like Aunt Selma. This may be presumptuous, but have you ever considered artificial insemination? And then Homer's like, boy, I don't know. You got to be pretty desperate to make it with a robot. <laughs> <laughs> and then, was it Lisa or Marge that whispered, Marge. At, Homer's, yeah, whispered at Homer's ears like, oh. 
<laughs> yeah, Marge like whispers something in his ear, and Homer's like, "Oh, yeah, that's uh okay. Never mind. I was wrong." Um, I I would is... I would not be I would not be surprised if in the near future, artificial insemination was actually making it with a robot. Um, maybe I mean... for uh, no because the, so artificial insemination is basically IVF, where they basically take a sperm donor and eggs of a woman and then they put it inside the woman's body or a or a carrier and that's how they they do that that's no, basically no i thought in the old days it was a baster baster up the yoo and i thought that's what it, i think it back in the old days but i mean hey come on if you're a woman wanting to get pregnant man just make a fucking robot that you can have sex with and then do it that way i mean but where are you getting the sperm well, you still get it out of sperm. Maybe you rent you rent a robot from the sperm bank that has a sperm already That's loaded. That's why they have IVF, even though it's super expensive to do IVF. Yeah, it's probably cheaper to make have sex with a robot. Come on. This isn't Futurama, Steve. Come on. I think Homer's got a point here. I think <laughs> Homer... No, because you can't have... you can, No, no robosexuality. It's a bad <laughs> thing. <laughs> Global <laughs> sexuality is bad. Uh, Futurama if, if our young, so right. If our young men keep having sex with robots, there will there will be no more world. Oh, that's good. I like it. That's that's great. Oh, that's perfect. That was a good pull. I love it. I love it. All well, right. it's a Matt Gra- it's a Matt Groening. Uh, it is. So. Yep. Uh, so uh, we uh, head to the Springfield Sperm Bank, which was established in 1858. And their slogan is, put your sperm in our hands. Oh, gross. So gross. <laughs> oh that's good. And then now, my question is, I, I guess I should have looked this up. When was the first spring bank actually established? Because I don't, you need a cooler or a freezer really to store sperm. And I don't know when refrigeration technology really started to hit its peak. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think they had ice in, like, the mid-1800s, right? They were able to make ice. Like maybe. So, yeah. Hey, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Um, and so then we learned that uh, we learned that Barney, <laughs> this is where Barney makes all his money. That was one of his jobs yep. we mentioned a few episodes ago. Yeah. Um, and there are several women walking around carrying tiny Barney babies. Because so apparently other... Barney's the only sperm donor at this sperm bank. I guess. Now, the other thing, too, is this just reminded me, there is a movie out there. I forget who stars in it. It might be Ashton Kutcher. I could be wrong. Um, Where a dude donated a bunch of sperm and now he has like 150 kids. Do you remember that movie? Uh, No. It didn't do very well in theaters. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, there like is, there is there is a movie out there where a guy donated sperm and he found out, or maybe he just slept with a bunch of women, either or, and he finds out he has like a hundred plus kids. And oh, yeah, wait, I, never I think I do it. remember that movie. Yeah. I think I do remember that one. Yeah, it was an awful movie that I never watched. Yeah, it looked all terrible. Right. All right, so uh, we get the sper- Springfield Sperm Bank One Hundred and One Frozen Pop Magazine with <laughs> Professor Frank. Troy McGlure and Jacques on the cover. I love the random Jacques appearances. Just that's a great. So like, that's the thing. So obviously we've only seen Barney donating sperm, but you know, Frank McClure and Jacques are on the cover. So that clearly tells me they probably donate sperm too. So why are there just a, bu- like a bunch of Barney Barney's babies? Sperm, <laughs> is Barney sperm really just that potent? It must be for a drunk. Cause you alcohol is bad for the sperm call. Yeah, I don't know. It seems uh, counterintuitive, but uh, but I like how I like how Marge is at the at the table flipping through. She's like, "Ooh, a Nobel Prize winner, an NBA All Star. Ooh, what are the sweat hogs?" <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I love Marge flipping through yeah. it. I mean, well, she's par- trying to help Selma pick out a sperm donor. Yeah. I didn't think it was. Well, I guess it's is that how they really work at sperm doning places. You to go through a catalog. I don't know. Well, so I've never, I've never donated sperm. You need to be I'm not a. Need, come on, you need to be on a. This is like Simpsons one hundred and one research here. You should have a couple weeks ago. She should have went to a sperm bank. 
and gotten research <laughs> for this episode. So from the from TV and movies that I've watched that have dealt with sperm banks, um, and I, I'm I'm fairly confident that it's somewhat accurate that if you are a woman trying to get a sperm donor, you sit down with a doctor and they have folders and they 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 list the person's attributes and who they are, but not a name because that stuff's confidential. Yeah, and then the woman just gets to pick. Oh well, this person's sperm seems good. I'm gonna take this sperm. Yeah. Basically, I think you just go in. They they explain, you know, okay, this is the sperm you get to choose from, and then you're like, oh, well, this person must have good genes. I'm gonna take this person. Yeah, and it's not like, and it's not like uh, a blood type thing where they have to be a perfect match. Um, you know, it's your DNA mixing with somebody else's DNA. Yep. Like DNA is not a perfect match sort of thing. Now, obviously, if you don't know the other person's genetics or medical history, you might not know what you're going to get. Now, they might explain the medical history part of this person's life. They've had relatives with heart disease or whatever. Again, not a doctor, never worked at a sperm bank, all speculation. But I feel like I'm pretty close to that's how it works when a woman wants to get sperm. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Robert. All right. Yep. The kids run into uh, the Homer and Marsh's room to wake them up because they are ready to go to Duff Gardens. Finally. Woo! But Homer is sick because he kept on eating a, uh, I don't know, a 20 <laughs> foot sandwich from the company picnic. Yeah, And he's been oh eating it for about a week. I, you know, the funny thing is, because I've seen memes and I keep yes. seeing kind of video clips of the sandwich. I'm like, yep. what episode is this from? Yeah, and me too. Episode. I've seen a lot of memes with this sandwich lately. And I'm like, <laughs> where did this sandwich come from? And now we found the sandwich. <laughs> but I like how when, when apparently when the Simpsons characters get sick, they turn white. Yes. So. Well, wasn't he kind of a purple issue as well? A kind, I think that was more animation ish yeah. kind of stuff, but yeah, I, I think... do love the montage. I do love the montage of Homer eating the sandwich, and like every time we see a new clip, like the sandwich is grosser and grosser. Like yeah. the one where he's sitting in the kitchen, and Marge's like, "I found this week old sandwich Ooh. behind the, the <laughs> couch," and Homer's like, "Ooh, week old sandwich." Yep, and uh, the mayonnaise definitely has turned. I'll definitely yep. definitely say that. <laughs> And, you know, Homer is way too sick to go. So Selma yeah. decides to take the kids and said, and, you yeah. know, Bart says Satan, uh, he would have Satan himself drive to Duff Gardens. Yeah. Because um, Homer, Homer is like, well, don't you want to go with me? And Bart's like, ah, no. <laughs> and I like how they're outside the house and Homer's, you know, trying to throw away the sandwich. <laughs> and uh, Bart slaps it out of his hand. <laughs> yeah, because he just doesn't want to let that sandwich go. Oh I, my god! Must have been one hell of a sandwich, I guess. I I better have been to get that sick. Well, clearly he either got salmonella. I'm assuming yeah. salmonella, food poisoning. Um, I'm surprised he I don't didn't know die how... after the way that sandwich looked. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't die. And mm -hmm. also, you know, waiting that long to eat a sandwich, I can't imagine anybody looking at that sandwich oh yeah it looks good and then and then on top of it being brave enough to take a bite and go, oh, 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 oh. it tastes good oh no 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 yep and so oh. as yeah so as selma and uh bard and lisa are driving up to duff uh gardens they see her see the duff pyramid mm. which looks pretty damn good took like yeah. five uh five men to lift and 22 immigrant laborers died during its construction <laughs> yeah and also, if, if if nobody has guessed at this point, Duff Gardens is a parody of Disney theme parks. Got another Disney reference. Yeah. This, this is this is just getting really funny. It is. Um, and so this episode marks the first appearance of the seven Duffs. Yep. Um, however, only Tipsy, Queasy, Surly, and Remorseful are named in the episode. But we get yep. to see get to see them all. Yeah. Um, and so now Surly we... only looks out for Surly. Yep. And so now we get the uh, the Beer Hall of Presidents, yep. which I, I was like, Beer Hall of Presidents. Is this like the Hall of Presidents from Futurama where they're all, they got a no. bunch of heads in a jar? And no, no, no. This is the Hall of Presidents where they're drunk. Yeah. So uh, after Bart Simpson's pants, the George Washington uh, animatronic, uh, he caused the animatronics to turn around and glare at him ominously. And then Washington's purple uh, pupils glowed red with uh, mechanical reverb being heard in the background. 
And this, this is a reference to the Terminator franchise. So in particular, Arnold Schwarzenegger yes. and his red eye lenses. Yep. That's pretty that good. That was kind of fun. Yeah. I like it. And yep. so we see uh Homer weary, wearing a beer helmet, <laughs> but instead <laughs> of booze, he's drinking Pepto Bismol. Yeah. Well, yeah, so... you know, when you have an upset stomach, diarrhea, and whatever the rest of the symptoms are from those commercials, you know, Pepto Bismol is fantastic. I love Pepto Bismol. Yeah, um, but there is a there is a really bad side effect to Pepto Bismol. I won't tell is. you. On, uh, no, no, no. I don't think I could. I could tell anyone on this podcast. It's pretty oh. pretty gross. It has to do with you going number two, but it turns it pink. No, no, it turns it like black. If yeah, you, yeah. Well, it's probably the body's response to. Yeah, it doesn't. The, it's not friendly. It doesn't no. look. Doesn't look good. No. So off of that note, uh, Homer is like, man, what are the odds of getting <laughs> sick on a Saturday? It's got to be like a thousand to one. Uh, well, for any math geeks out there, if there's seven days in a week, the odds are seven to one. Yeah, because yeah, you know, seven days in a week, you're gonna get sick on a day. Seven to one odds. So, Homer, your odds are really good of getting sick on a Saturday, especially after eating a god darn gross sandwich. Um, so Marge, who's now caring for a sick Homer, um, you know, comes in with some rental tapes and she's, ha- she's got boxing's greatest weigh-ins, which, um, <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, maybe and there's some mo- brawls or fights at the, at these weigh-ins. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so she also says she rented the movie Yentl and Homer asks Marge what Yentl is. And it's uh, about a bookish young Jewish woman who poses as a man so she can go to rabbinical school, which I'm surprised I've never watched Yentl. I've heard of Yentl. I know there's a Seinfeld reference to Yentl, but I've never actually seen Yentl. And Homer goes, oh, yeah, that sounds great. And Marge <laughs> concludes that Homer is delirious. <laughs> you know, she did that just because she's like, well, I'm going to get a really Homer movie. And then I'm going to get a really not Homer movie and see which <laughs> yeah. one he chooses. And apparently he likes Yentl. Yep. Because he's sick and he's delirious. So now uh, we go back to Duff Gardens with Selma, Lisa, and B- Bart. And they're at the souvenir stand and it has beer goggles. Which lets you see the world through the eyes of a drunk. And so Bart puts them on and he looks at Selma and like she turns she turns like this shapely, beautiful woman and she like says something and Bart takes off the glasses and like, Did you say something? She's like I, I forget what Selma said, but it was not when what Bart had the beer goggles on. The problem is is there like an auditory, like, is there a speaker thing in the beer goggles? Because beer goggles don't shit like beer goggles in real life. When you're drunk, you might hear different things, but Bart isn't drunk. So he's only yeah. see, like the disfigured world form, not actually hearing drunkenness. Do they sell beer goggles at Duff Gardens? I did not see any. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. That would have been so, really funny to have though. Yeah, and so uh, they they get to the line for uh, Little Land of Duff, which is apparently two hours long, but it's really not because they are standing in the line for the complaints. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's great. Apparently, it uh, must be a really crappy park if there's that long of a line to complain about it. Yeah. And so now we go back to the house, and... Um, Homer is feeling much better, so they watch The Erotic Adventures of Hercules, which was mentioned on Mr. Plow when Troy McClure hosted Carnival of the Stars, because he stars in The Erotic Adventures of Hercules. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. See, you know, and I mentioned when we started this podcast, I'm like, oh, there's no continuity in this show. I've I've been proven time and time again wrong. Yes. Um, So, uh... So now we cut back to Duff Gardens and they go on Little Land of Duff, which is a parody ride of It's a Small World, which I have ridden. And <laughs> oh my God, um, that Duff. ride is long. Yep. And never remember, again. Remember, remember Selma was like, we got seven more continents to go. <laughs> like, Duff beer for me. Duff beer for you. I'll have a Duff. You have one too. 
Now I wonder. And, now I wonder if they're all uh, in uh, uh, like different languages because we only think saw they, they were. Yeah, they were. I think. Well, I don't know. We only saw the English version. I could have sworn there was another that when they were still in there, we heard another version. Oh, I guess I don't know. I mean, it, next it was basically when uh, Lisa was uh, like, uh, dr- like I don't know if she was drunk or high off her mind. <laughs> Oh, did you drink the water? At, at uh, yeah, did you? It's did a you, small world. Yeah. No. Why not? You could have been the Lizard Queen. <laughs> First of all, I'm pretty sure that's just pool water in there, <laughs> and I don't want to drink pool water. I have drank enough pool water in my life just because of swimming in pools. Yeah. So and you accidentally drink pool water when you swim. I will say it's a small world. Only, t- um, I, I, you know, I told our, our mom about, you know, going on It's a Small World. And like, I guess when we were kids and apparently you've been on It's a Small World when you were yeah. a kid yep. and mom was telling me about that and she's like, never again. Yeah. I don't know who, why people think that that ride is any good. And okay. How, okay. You, okay. How long was the line for that ride? Was it like you just got in the line and hop on? No, was... it was long. Why? We were, line, we were in line for like 10 minutes, maybe 15. Well, that's not long, dude. T- dude, long is when you're standing in line for two and a half hours to ride the Batman ride at Six Flags. It that's was, long. Okay. 10 minutes is not long. To be fair, most of the lines we stood in when we went to Disney, I think the longest line we waited for, and the only reason we waited longer was because the ride broke down, was the Cars ride at California Disney Adventure. Oh. Because we waited in line for like 45 minutes because the ride broke down. And yeah. then like, I right mean, as we also, got there, I mean, and right as we went, got there, they fixed it. So Yeah, but I mean, you went mid, first of all, you went midweek during the school year. So, I mean. Yeah. You, so ten, a 15 minute wait is a long time. No, that is not a long time. You've waited longer. It was still longer. a long line. <laughs> I mean, they were also getting people through pretty quickly. I mean, the ride, the ride felt like it was 20 minutes. It was probably like four, <laughs> but yeah, that is, yeah, that's, I, I got my, it's a small world ride in. Don't need to go on it ever again. Yep. So I just want to let everyone know this episode marks Lisa's first substance induced hallucination. I am the lizard queen. Yes. Yeah. So Bart dared Lisa to drink the water <laughs> because they're at Duff Gardens. And I don't know if I can't, I don't think it's beer. Well, we find out later it's not beer. It's like there's chemicals in it. Yeah. And she starts tripping. Oh yeah. Dude. She like waves her hand. She like finally escapes. Like she jumps into the water <laughs> and escapes out of the ride. I don't know yeah. how Bart and Patty ended up following her at all, I guess, but I mean, because they're kind of on a boat, but apparently somehow they all, you know. Well, if you've ever been on It's a Small World, the water is probably like knee deep for an adult. It's not that deep, so you can easily get out of the boat and run. I mean, for a kid, it might be a little bit harder because it might go up to like their shoulders. I don't know if it's that deep. I think it's only like two feet. So like that maybe their waistline. So yeah, you could easily get out of that boat and now granted they do have the little bars that come down on top of you just in case. Yeah. So, I mean, but still you could get out of the boat and run away if you're tripping on water acid. Yeah. Whatever it's, that was. I like so when Lisa's running through the street all high, we see the Statue of Liberty rolling by drinking a duff yeah. in the duff yeah. light parade. Uh, we did not get to see the parade at Disney. No, that's kind of sad. No. Well, we left. I mean, we got there at 7 a.m., left at 7 p.m. We were going to try to go all day. And by like, I don't know, even by three, my feet were killing me. Because we, we did a lot of walking and standing around. So uh, Bart, you know, wants to go on a roller coaster. And it's like. Like the, the, the ride where you sit is a barrel Yo. and he put suckers on the bottom of his feet so he could be a little, just tall enough to, to go on the roller coaster. And he tells the kid running the ride that he's doing a good job, takes the suckers off and then he goes on the ride and then the ride, he starts screaming, he yells for the ride to get stopped. So they stop it and they stop it 
<laughs> on the top of a loop. And I'm pretty sure <laughs> on most rides, when there's a loop de loop, there's actually nothing on the loop. Well, actually, I don't know if that's true or well, not. Rides, like, rides have got stuck upside down before. Yeah. So, so, but I like how I like how the little bar, the bar that's supposed to lock Bart in, goes behind his body, I, and then yeah. Bart says, "Whoa, this ain't good." <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. There's a height requirement, Bart. No, there's not. Um, and so we get a uh, a security sign outside of you know because they got Bart off the ride. They found. Lisa and so Selma comes and I love how there's a sign outside of the security. It's of Surly. It says, don't get caught or else. And there is a guy in a duff costume and I'm pretty sure there's a noose around his <laughs> neck and he's hanging. That is really dark. Yeah. And then uh, I like how Selma goes up to, goes up to them and uh, it's like, can't you do something? Yeah. Surly only looks out for one. Got one guy. Surly. Sorry, Surly. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah. And then we see, you know, Jimbo, Kearney, and Dolph stealing bumper cars again, going down the street. Yeah, and again, I don't think they would work outside of the ride. Nope. And so they find they someone found Lisa, brought her into the uh, police security area, and she exclaims, "I am the Lizard Queen." <laughs> oh, I and love her, that. And her, and her whole trip is a reference to the song Lizard King by The Doors. And she also dances like Jim Morrison, who is the lead singer. Yeah, yeah that's really funny. And I like how some guy comes in and it's like, okay, Lisa, Lisa will have to take two of these and some of these and, and all of these. of these. And he's like, thanks, doctor. I'm not the doctor. <laughs> Maybe just, he's like a scientist who are maybe. technically doctors. Yeah, maybe. Or they just know. And they're like, well, I'm going to wear this lab coat to make myself seem smart. Yeah. But really, uh, we know what's in the water. So take this. Yep. And so then we come back to the Simpsons house and Homer is dressed up as Hercules because, yep. hey, he just saw the erotic adventures of Hercules and now he wants to, you know, seduce Roll Marge. Marge. Yeah. The role playing exactly, and then so Selma, you know, walks in with the kids, and so it's like Homer, how do you do it? Well, you take a take a bed sheet and you tie up. It's like <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so good. <laughs> which is like uh, she was talking about uh, raising the kids. Yeah. Which I mean, to be fair, for how you know messed up Homer is, at least he does somewhat uh somewhat good well as we'll see in the next episode are we really sure about that yeah and so uh they someone goes home or no this is all at the at the simpsons house isn't it correct right yep. yeah and so patty ended up getting jub jub from their mom to give to selma because you know yep. selma was like all right you know what i guess i can't have a kid but hey jub jub will uh Job, job. I just like saying his name. Yep. And so then she starts singing, uh, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman by Aretha Franklin to Job, job. Yep. That's and then that's new... how the episode, that, how, that is how the episode ends with the credits. Yep. And then a song plays over, that the that song actually plays, plays. over the credits. Over. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it's a good episode. I wouldn't say it's great. Um... It's an interesting episode. I like the character development of Selma. It gives, you know, I like when side characters get a little more depth. Now, the problem is Selma is not a relatable character because she's like a middle-aged woman. And I, I don't know what it's like to not be able to have kids or, you know, all that. It's still, it's, it's a good episode. I love the jokes. I love Duff Gardens. It's... I love that side of the episode and you know, it, it, it's not, it's very hard for me to judge this episode because there are some good jokes. I, I like the sandwich making Homer sick. That's really funny. But at the same time, where did they go for the funeral? Yeah. That was the most confusing part of the whole episode is where, where did they run off Ooh. to? Like, I like the jokes. I like the end with the lizard queen and, Bart with the beer goggles and it's just, it's very hard for me 
to to judge. I want to give it a four because I do think it's a funny episode. It builds off of Selma's character, but at the same time, I feel like it's also an average episode. So I'm I'm gonna go I'm I'm gonna go with three. Don't have a cow man. It's a good episode. It's definitely rewatchable. It's just I find it very hard to judge it. Yeah, I'm definitely on a three. Uh, don't have a cow man. I it's really we like you said. It's just a oddish episode. I mean, you get it's funny. You look at <laughs> you look at some of the episodes and you're like, okay. These have memeable uh, pictures. It's something that people actually do find funny, which it is. And yeah. I mean, one of the most classic Lisa lines, I am the lizard queen came from this episode. But when yeah. you build an episode, I mean, it, it's hard to look at building an episode around stuff with quotable lines. Cause you're like, well, the episode might not have been as good, but you have a lot of good stuff in it. And to me, just an average watch. I mean, I... I mean, we it, did get Jub Jub out of it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think to me, it's just an average an average watch. Uh, three, yeah. don't have a cow, man. Nothing absolutely spectacular. It's... There's nothing offensive in it. I'll no, say that much. I mean, it's one of those episodes that I'm like, oh, this is here. I'll watch it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it just doesn't... It doesn't... Uh, it's, and I don't even think this is one of those episodes where if I saw it on TV, it'd be like... I'll probably watch it for five minutes and then I'll be like, eh, I'm done. I'll watch it. Yeah. Something else on the TV. So I would, I wish I, I don't know if maybe in a future episode we get more Duff gardens, but I would let, I would definitely like a more Duff gardens centric episode. Yeah. I think the I think only thing we really, really get is the Duff brewery. I don't think we get a, yeah. any more Duff gardens, unfortunately. So, so yeah, let's uh, close it out with our character profile and odd choice this week only because <laughs> <laughs> Only because we had done uh, Selma in a previous episode. Yeah. Um. This week we're gonna get uh, we're gonna do Patty. Patty. They should have done Patty first and then Selma. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, it's how it is. So, yep. uh, her occupation: DMV clerk with her sister Selma. Yep. Her voice: deep, graveled, and scratchy. Mm, I wonder why that is. Yeah. Maybe favorite, it's because of her favorite vice. Her favorite vice: cigarettes. Lots of cigarettes. Yeah, they are chain smokers. Yep. Isn't there an episode where one of them tries... Well, I know the episode where Selma meets Troy McClure. She tries to give up smoking. Yeah. But isn't there like a later episode where they actually try to quit? Or am I just crazy? Um, I'm sure there is. I would have okay. to imagine. Um, And then Quirks bores others with detailed <laughs> slideshows from trips abroad. Yeah, those are some really yeah. uh, boring uh, slideshows. And considers a kiss scoring. Hey, man, <laughs> go into a drought. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, surrogate husband, twin sister, Selma. Yeah. They t- they take care of each other. They're, uh, yeah. they're, always, they're always around. Uh, abilities, grow leg hair rapidly. Ooh. Insults brother-in-law with <laughs> ease. Why, why not just say insults Homer with ease? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't tell you why. Well, well, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, she loves feet rubbed by nephews and nieces. <laughs> yeah. And hates missing MacGyver. 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 So yeah, that's uh that's uh twin sister Patty for you. Yep. So where can the people find us? Well first, first, before people oh. before people can find us, I would like to shout out to another one of our awesome fans who bought us three duffs on buymeacoffee.com. Thank you so much. I mean, this is awesome. I love people who support our podcast. They are absolutely amazing. Her name is... You don't even have to support us with your money. We appreciate it. But your kind words will do well as well. Yes, we do like kind words. Well, she she went above and beyond. She don't... Her name is Allison. So thank you so much, Allison, for the donation. She bought us three duffs, which we will drink 
ever so nicely and get completely wasted and blow all your money on Duff because <laughs> that's what Homer would do. Because but, you know what? You can't get enough of that wonderful Duff. <laughs> yep. But she also left us an awesome comment, too. She's like, as an avid Simpson viewer, since I was a little girl, it was the Sunday night ritual in my house for me and my parents to watch the newest episode every week during the late 90s and early 2000s. And now as someone who still watches the show daily, no joke, I was so excited to find this podcast. I love what you guys are doing. So thank you again, Allison, for the donation. We will get those stickers out to you uh, ASAP. And we're going to look into doing some other things for our supporters as well. Um, so if you're someone like Allison that wants to donate three duffs, we're going to look into getting you something even above and beyond for stickers because, I mean, yeah. stickers are fun. You can slap them on laptops and things, but we want to get you something that you could see around every day. So keep yeah. keep out for that. Um, and if you are just like Allison and love our podcast and want to support our uh, podcast, head over to buymeacoffee.com backslash Simpsons did it to donate to the podcast. Like, like Robert said, you don't have to donate with money if you don't want. If you don't want to donate with kind words, feel free to uh, post I them. also accept donuts. Yes. I don't know how <laughs> we're going to get them, but yes. Um, but yeah, feel free. You can go to buy me a coffee and leave us comments on there. I actually just learned this uh, not too long ago. Um, but yeah, if you want to head over there and just leave comments, feel free to do that as well. Um, but if you want to leave us uh, comments on our social media... Uh, head over to uh, Facebook, The Simpsons Did It Podcast, Instagram, The Simpsons Did It Pod, uh, Twitter, Simpsons Did It PC. So there's lots of places to find us. And yeah, if you want to donate, uh, feel free. Buymeacoffee.com backslash Simpsons Did It. And all your donations will go towards uh, merch. So yep. um, lots more to come, hopefully. And we're going to we're gonna build this thing up. We, we are we, Our listenership has grown so much lately. That I feel and we like thank you guys for yep, listening. I feel like we need to we need to pump it up a bit. We we need to we need to go all out there. So if you guys have suggestions too, feel free to give us suggestions on what you like more out of our uh out of our podcast. So right, we also have YouTube, so you can go over to YouTube and watch uh, our channel which has all of our backlogged episodes. If you'd like to see us personally do like live videos, we we would definitely do that as well. Um yeah. But like and subscribe and comment on our videos on, on uh, YouTube if you can do that for us. That'd be great. And then also, if you're Apple Podcast listeners, head over to Apple Podcasts and uh, rate and review on there. It'd be awesome to get some more bump up on that uh, just because we like to know how you guys are doing and uh, what you guys are feeling from this podcast. And lastly, we just opened up a voicemail hotline where you guys can call and leave us a voicemail, and we had the wonderful Jaden, uh, voice actor on our uh, last episode, um, uh, Monorail. Uh, March versus the Monorail. March versus the Monorail. Um, and he did an amazing, amazing voicemail for us. And I'm not going to tell you which Simpsons character he did. Yeah, you got to call be- in and find out. Because you got to call in and find out. And our, that number to call in is 612 584 zero nine eight six uh if you guys want to leave us funny messages go for it if you want to leave comments and questions do that um, if you want if you if you think you can uh, impersonate a simpsons character do that as well maybe we'll uh clip that in uh somewhere yep or and, or you know give you a shout out at least and be like hey listen to this this is really good yep and uh also one other thing i want to do in the future and this will probably come on feedback fridays is I will tell you guys an episode that me and Robert are going to be recording in the in the near future. And if you want to leave your favorite quotes, favorite comments, favorite parts of these upcoming episodes, I will be sure to splice those in in the episode as they air. So um, we want to definitely start getting our listeners more involved in the podcast. So um, that number again, 612-584-0986. So call us and uh, leave a message. Um, And until next time, I am Steven Skolansky. And I'm Robert Skolansky. And this has been The Simpsons Did It. Shh.